Hey guys, we are back for another video. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you are notified when we do upload. Guys, it is getting serious in these breakfast club streets. Um, so Tyrese is unleashing the beast and he is let, letting it be known that y'all lying on him. None of this stuff has never taken place in Gia or Gia, whatever your name is, DJ Envy's wife, are you trying to save face? Because your husband is all in these, um, on the blogs and everywhere because he was running a Ponzi scheme, allegedly stealing people's money. Are y'all trying to take the heat off y'all self? Let's get into these videos, y'all, so we can see what's really going on because somebody is lying and guess who it is? You already know, allegedly. <laughs> Okay, let's get into our copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Just remember, allowance is made for fair use for the purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and scholarships, and we are doing research. So let's jump into this video, and we're going to come back for commentary. People got a short attention span. They're not going to be thinking about this shit in the next three hours, three days. Move on. Let it go. Take the high road. You're a star. The stage is big. Envy. You knew how you said, I don't give a fuck about nothing. If anybody disrespect my wife, and then you ran down all your kids' names, you said, I don't give a fuck who you are, what it is. When it comes to my wife and my family, I don't play no games. You goofy ass. No one has disrespected your wife and your family more than you. You know the most dangerous thing about me? Is I know what I know about the level you took it to. I'll leave it at that. So all of a sudden, when it comes to your wife and your family, that's off limits. I don't play no games. I'll fucking be ready to shoot, stab, and kill when it comes to my wife and my family. But nigga, no one has violated and disrespected the shit out of your first lady and your family more than you. Put a pin in that. I'm not on the air, am I? Yes. You're on the air. When you called, she answered because you called her from the hotline number at the radio station. That's how it works. <laughs> Everybody can see through the Let me explain something to you, sir. Any real man who's ever been married, got a fiance, a girl, a baby mama, most real men, most don't play no games when it comes to their girl or their wife ever being disrespected or violated by another man. Y'all story is all over the place. It's so all over the place that y'all don't even realize that what you said at 501 is very different than what you're saying at 503. DJ Envy, you know how much your net worth is, right? You know you don't have a prenuptial agreement in place, right? You know you got about six or seven kids, right? You know that everything about everything pertaining to your world was about to come crashing down. And for some random, strange, odd, unexpected reason, I did exactly what God told me to do. And they say that no good deed shall go unpunished. And I'm experiencing this shit right now in real time. You know why your wife called into the airwaves, bro? 
because you got exposed in your living room. When I said, how convenient, you could not sit there and look me as a man in my eyes and tell me with real honesty and integrity why my divorce has been a mockery and a funny joke and a topic of discussion at the breakfast club. You and Charlemagne talking about mental health, mental health, mental health awareness. Are we gonna be advocates for mental health awareness or are we out here trying to f people mental health up because you're giving out donkeys of the day and attacking people and going into people's issues and breakups and marriages and financial traumas and all of the things. Yeah, you got a job to do, I got it. You're on radio, you got to report the news, I got all that, I got it. But you cannot be pumping and perpetuating mental health and mental health awareness and then be out here fucking people mental health up. I don't have mental health issues. I had a mental health breakdown because I was given psych meds that had extreme adverse effects. If I'm in a studio and smoking weed, you'll see me sleep on the couch. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do anything. Anything that has to do with me being exposed to anything, I'm gonna be wiped out. You got a bottom line about never disrespecting your wife and never disrespecting your family. That, that, that's a general consensus. I think every man in the world feels that exact same way. But actually, how do you disrespect your wife and your family the most and try and hold another man to a particular standard? And how do I go above and beyond to be used to step in to do whatever it is that I did to try and help. You guys ultimately still did all the work. You guys still decided to stick to your vows. Let me remind you, through thick and thin, for better, for worse, sickness and health till death do us part. We can say a lot of things, but we can't say that you ain't got a real wife over there that's really got your back. Part. We can say a lot of things, but we can't say that you ain't got a real wife over there that's really got your back because she's still with you. Ponzi scheme, stealing all this money from all these innocent people, that ain't got to do with me. What you did behind her back with the one, with the two, with the ten, that ain't got nothing to do with me. See, you're a manipulator, you're a gaslighter, and you're also one of those great undiscovered actors. What does that mean? How the fuck are you living a double, triple life and your wife, who is completely innocent and sweet, had no sign and no indication whatsoever that she was out doing what it is that she was doing? You had to be one of the baddest I've ever known to cheat on your wife, ever. I mean, are you nice with, you ain't leave a trail of popcorn down the hallway at all. Hats off to you. <laughs> Let's unpack this last thing. One of the other things that was mentioned well, two of the other things that was mentioned, and then I'm done. There were nights that Tyrese called me. This is what your wife said. And I'd be on the phone, and we'd be talking about topics and things, and my husband would be laying in the same bed right on the side of me. Really? I'm on the phone with your wife, 
and you're in the same bed laying on the side of her. What man, what real man would let another man be on the phone in any capacity if I actually disrespected her? If I actually flirted or did anything that y'all accused me of doing? What did I say and what did I do that was inappropriate? To where if it's so disrespectful and and inappropriate, you cross the line, need to box your mouth. Like, that was that was the most gangster I've ever heard in my life. You're, you're a comedian, dude. There were nights that me and Tyrese was talking and my husband was right laying in the same bed. So you, I've already allegedly violated you as a man, as a husband, and I violated your wife, allegedly, right? I crossed the line. I disrespected, I flirted, I went from trying to help, and then I turned it into something else, is what y'all are saying, right? How the f are we still in touch five, six years after God used me to step in and do what I did? It ain't adding up, bruh. And y'all ain't got no responsibility to me. Y'all ain't got nothing to do with me. I am not in business with y'all. We have no friendship and no relationship where y'all would have to say, he crossed the line, he flirted with you, he disrespected you, he said this and he said that. But don't worry about it. We're not gonna say nothing to him about it. We're not gonna confront him about it. I'm not gonna have my husband to call him and nigga, what the f you talking to my wife and coming up and saying this? Saying you know why you never said anything to Charlemagne about me flirting or disrespecting allegedly? Because it never happened. You know why you never called me? Text me? Confronted me? About what I said and did? Supposedly? Because it never happened. I'm going to tell you what really happened. Because you're not the sharpest nail you're not the sharpest knife in the drawer, Mr. Envy. I'm gonna tell you what really happened. After you was exposed on your own breakfast show about leaving me for dead, not calling, not checking on me, you and your wife could have flew to Atlanta, your wife could have pulled my wife to the side, and you could have pulled me to the side, and y'all could have attempted keyword, attempted to step in and help us when my world and my marriage and my shit was crashing and burning the choice you made was to make a mockery and laugh at my shit while it was all going down and that wasn't a choice that I made towards you and then when you got confronted about it on your show you grab some rain out of the sky and say across the line I disrespected, I overstepped, I violated. And yet we're still on text chains for the last five, six years. And yet we have been on calls, all three of us. I would say a minimum of 10, probably 15 times. I'm on the phone with your first lady which I've always called her from the beginning because she is your first lady. I'm on the phone with your first lady, I was like, oh, that's crazy. I say, do me a favor. Can you, can, you get, can you get Envy on the phone? She would always click over, you would answer, and we would talk. Where is the violation, Envy? Where is the disrespect, Envy? Where is the me overstepping and disrespecting anything that's got to do with your wife, Envy? Where is it? Be consistent, bro. Whatever it is that I did. What did he do? You know why Charlemagne don't know what I said and did? Because I never did it. You don't want nobody to attack your wife and your family. That's your bottom line. Let me tell you what my bottom line is. Until I take my last breath, maybe it's the Capricorn in me. 
I'll never let a violate my character, put words in my mouth, or paint a picture, manipulating, gaslighting, and putting me in this light for something that I never did. And if y'all gonna say I did something, just understand that I've been dealing with the courts. Divorce number two, baby mama number two, they don't deal in emotions. They don't deal in feelings. They don't deal in the courts. They don't deal with hearsay. What they deal with is receipts. Proof and evidence to back it up. Otherwise, the real reason that you had your wife to call into that station with that monologue that both of y'all Hurst is because social media was beating shit out of you because you was a goofy ass foul self-consumed you have your own self-interest in mind you don't give a fuck about nobody what you say, what you do, and the effects that it has on other people. That's why you're in the middle of all them lawsuits now. You'd rather go rob the average man and woman, take all their fucking money and do a Ponzi scheme, than to think about how they gave you their last, hoping and praying that they can take this small piece of an investment and turn it into something bigger. That's some heartless and then when it all goes down, what do you do? Now it's your partner's fault. Now it's what he did and what he kept away from you and you ain't got nothing to do with what was going on. You ain't know nothing and you caught off guard. It's all out in the open, bro. That's what it is, right? We're entertainers. Let me tell you who I am. I'm far from perfect, but I've been around everybody's wife, everybody's girlfriend, everybody's baby mama. I didn't knock down some of the baddest on human feet. I have myself, no disrespect, but I wouldn't even look in her direction, bro. This is me speaking on me. I wouldn't even look in that direction. That's all you, bro. If you want to get a sense of my pedigree and where I normally land, I can send it to you. <laughs> Come on, bro. Accuse me of something that actually makes sense. Wolf and sheep clothing. This guy that knows how to swindle his way into something and then his agenda becomes something. Uh, but y'all describing a lot of people, but you're not describing me. That ain't what the f I am. That ain't who I am. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to also say this, bro. I wouldn't be putting this up on my Instagram. I wouldn't be posting if all of this shit that just happened didn't play out for the world to see on your breakfast club. You definitely had every opportunity in the world, six years <laughs> of an opportunity to call me, text me, confront me, or come at me about anything that you claim or your wife claimed that I actually said or did. Six whole years. You know what, that's, you know what that is on the West Coast? the west coast we would define you as a not just not not that you're not a man huh? you're still a man <laughs> but you're not a man you a if you're gonna let anybody still be in touch with you or your first lady in any capacity after i supposedly violated and overstepped so I would say this to you, sir. Leave it alone. Y'all can respond. 
Y'all can defend yourself. Y'all can go ahead and do the next 10 episodes of The Breakfast Club attacking my life, my character. Y'all can have texting y'all, calling y'all, trying to give y'all the drop on this and that, trying to create some time. Y'all can invite on y'all show to do full interviews to try and describe me as something whatever picture they want to paint until i take my last breath nigga. i will defend my name i will defend my intentions and i will speak up and out about the truth and the truth is not always a good truth you don't want to tell the truth. I'm willing to tell the truth even if I embarrass the shit out of myself. Even if I throw myself under the bus. Even if I got to apologize. Even if I got to make whatever calls. I've been texting and calling after, after five, six years of us being in touch in any capacity. Make it make sense. You can't make it make sense because it don't. I'm gonna go back to Charlemagne, who you're with five days a week. I need to box you in your mouth because you disrespected my wife. Charlemagne says, what did he say? What did he do? You know why Charlemagne don't know what I said and did? Because I never did it. You don't want nobody to attack your wife and your family. That's your bottom line. Let me tell you what my bottom line is. Until I take my last breath, maybe it's the Capricorn in me. I'll never let a violate my character, put words in my mouth, or paint a picture, manipulating, gaslighting, and putting me in this light for something that I never did. And if y'all gonna say I did something, just understand that I've been dealing with the courts. Divorce number two, baby mama number two. They don't deal in emotions. They don't deal in feelings. They don't deal in the courts. They don't deal with hearsay. What they deal with is receipts, proof and evidence to back it up. Otherwise, the real reason that you had your wife to call into that station with that monologue that both of y'all rehearsed is because social media was beating shit out of you. Because you was a goofy ass foul self-consumed you have your own self-interest in mind you don't give a fuck about nobody what you say what you do and the effects that it has on other people that's why you're in the middle of all them lawsuits now you'd rather go rob the average man and woman take all they fucking money and do a Ponzi scheme than to think about how they gave you their last hoping and praying that they can take this small piece of an investment and turn it into something bigger. That's some heartless And then when it all goes down, what do you do? Now it's your partner's fault. Now it's what he did and what he kept away from you and you ain't got nothing to do with what was going on. You ain't know nothing and you caught off guard. It's all out in the open, bro. That's what it is, right? We're entertainers. Let me tell you who I am. I'm far from perfect. But I've been around everybody's wife, everybody's girlfriend, everybody's baby mama. I didn't knock down some of the baddest on human feet. I have myself. No disrespect. But I wouldn't even look in her direction, bro. This is me speaking on me. I wouldn't even look in that direction. That's all you, bro. 
If you want to get a sense of my pedigree and where I normally land, I can send it to you. <laughs> Come on, bro. Accuse me of something that actually makes sense. Wolf in sheep clothing. This guy that knows how to swindle his way into something and then his agenda becomes something. Uh, but y'all describing a lot of people, but you're not describing me. That ain't what the f I am. That ain't who I am. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna also say this, bro. I wouldn't be putting this up on my Instagram. I wouldn't be posting if all of this shit that just happened didn't play out for the world to see on your breakfast club. You definitely had every opportunity in the world, six years <laughs> of an opportunity to call me, text me, confront me, or come at me about anything that you claim or your wife claimed that I actually said or did. Six whole years. You know what that's, you know what that is on the West Coast? On the West Coast, we would define you as a not just, not, not that you're not a man, huh? you're still a man, <laughs> but you're not a man. You a If you're going to let anybody still be in touch with you or your first lady in any capacity after I supposedly violated and overstepped. So I would say this to you, sir. Leave it alone. Y'all can respond. Y'all can defend yourself. Y'all can go ahead and do the next 10 episodes of The Breakfast Club attacking my life, my character. Y'all can have texting y'all, calling y'all, trying to give y'all the drop on this and that, trying to create some time. Y'all can invite on y'all show to do full interviews to try and describe me as something, whatever picture they want to paint. Until I take my last breath, nigga. I will defend my name, I will defend my intentions, and I will speak up and out about the truth. And the truth is not always a good truth. You don't want to tell the truth. I'm willing to tell the truth even if I embarrass the shit out of myself. Even if I throw myself under the bus, even if I got to apologize, even if I got to make whatever calls I've been texting and calling after five, six years. I don't know, y'all. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. It looks like Tyrese is unleashing the beast. Did Gia lie on Tyrese? Why is all of this happening all of a sudden? How could it be that Tyrese was inappropriately texting a grown woman? who didn't say anything. And then when her husband called her, she still didn't want to say what it was. That doesn't make any sense. I want to know what was her responsibility in all of this. Let me know what y'all think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next video. And then guys, go and check out um, my earlier video where I talked about this, where um, the title of it is The Truth About Gia Casey and Tyrese Relationship. I'll see y'all in the next video. Talk to you later.